water. We all need it to live, but you wouldn't know that from playing an RPG. From Dungeons & Dragons to Final Fantasy, the snubbing of two hydrogens double-teaming in oxygen is ridiculous. Is Elden Ring an exception? No. Water sucks. Gatorade is better. But I make this promise to you, gamer. I will kill the Elden Beast with a bubble, or I will die trying. I'm on a quest to find the most fun build in Elden Ring, and wanted to give Avatar's premier waterbender, Katara, a shot. If you want to make me drink water, you can do that with channel points on Twitch. But to get channel points, you gotta watch, so maybe you should follow me. To make sure I can afford water, give me money on Patreon, and to avoid drowning in exposition, We'll start the video now. Character creation begins and I choose the Astrologer class. It's got a lot of intelligence and mind and not a whole lot else. There is one other stat we kind of need, not counting Vigor, but there isn't an intelligence and arcane starting class. Like the Toph video, putting the 2D avatar style into the 3D Elden Ring got complicated. At least we got some fun braids though. Starting off, we don't really have a water spell, but the glintstone arc looks vaguely wavy, so we'll use that until we can get something better. But if I don't have to use it, I won't, so let's avoid the grafted scion by cliff dive. Limgrave is always fun. If you love running errands, sometimes it can be comforting just crossing things off a list. Buying a crafting kit, getting a horse from the Avatar, helping the boulder out of a hole, and then heading directly to Lernia for a sacred tier and some other stuff. Old Avatar brings us to the round table hold. It's a momentary distraction before we can head up to the lake and behind an invisible wall to find the path to carry a manor. We're not doing the Ronnie quest. Well, we're not doing the Ronnie quest yet. Instead, I'm heading to a little pond just east of the manor using our big wave to hit an invisible teardrop scarab and get the Hoarfrost Stomp Ash of War. If you watched early speedruns of Elden Ring, you might remember this as the most busted thing ever. It sends out a shockwave of ice damage, each piece of that shockwave does a huge chunk of damage, and it stacks Frostbite, which means that the next hits will deal even more damage, and runners would take out the Godskin Duel at level 1 without issue. It was great. If you've been paying attention to patch notes, though, you know FromSoft nerfed it into oblivion. It's still not terrible. It applies Frostbite pretty fast, which is always good. It has a big area and it comes out relatively fast. It's just that the base damage isn't as much. To put it on a weapon, we have to grab a wet blade from Limgrave. That's funny, water is wet. It kind of works. Then we head to the third Church of America, grab the Physic Flask, and blue Skidoo into Grail. On the way to the dragon, we grab an extra memory stone, then start stomping. You forgot the pickle! Okay, back to Limgrave real quick, and then we start stomping. We have to get a bit of arcane and intelligence for later, but I also definitely wanted some vigor, because dying makes me sad. There's a couple more levels hiding in Fort Fairwood between the Golden Rune 12 and Radigan Sore Seal that we can sell. It's just a struggle to avoid the rats. We made it out alive, and that bodes well for the rest of the run. I don't want Bubble Bass on my ass again, so let's get some more pickles. First, we have to deal with Nerd Juice. The Hoarfrost Stomp is okay at handling him, but we're really just stalling until Jet shows up to help us out. Or should Jet be Nerd Juice, since Jet's kind of a villain? I don't, uh, I don't know. Nerd Juice dies. Then we head into the Murkwater Cave to fight a Swindler. Wait, should Patches be Jet? I hit the Horfrost Stomp, then hit the wrong button and attack him after he surrenders. Whoopsie. Guess we gotta kill him. He drops the bell bearing that lets us buy pickles and the pickle recipe, but maybe even more importantly, a plus seven spear. We need that for a special Ash of War. The Stomp just isn't performing like I wanted to, so we need another option. In Lernia, near a broken bridge, there's a Knight's cavalry that drops the Ice Spear Ash of War. I haven't heard a lot about this one, but it shoots a little icicle out of a spear. Every other ice option is locked, either in the mountaintops of the Giants or behind the Ghost of Loretta, which is immune to status effects and heavily resists magic. So, how hard could a knight's cavalry be? Very. It's really aggressive, and the stomp can only hurt the horse, not the rider. We aren't even able to kill the horse before I give up and try a new strategy. There's an elevator in the Mistwood that leads down into the Saoirse Ronan River Well, one of the most gorgeous areas in Elden Ring, maybe in any game ever. We do a little parkour up some ruins and find a little dung beetle hanging out on top of a pillar. Inside that dung beetle's piece of shit is something really shitty. The Oracle Bubbles spell. Maybe it will work well against the Knight's Cavalry. Sure, the casting time is long, the bubbles move slowly, but don't let that fool you. The damage is also bad. You thought I was gonna say something redeeming about them, didn't you? No, there's nothing redeeming at all about the bubbles. They are bubbles. They are exactly as effective for killing monsters as a bit of soap and water. Probably less effective, since the soap would at least sting their eyes. After two deaths and doing practically nothing, I needed to come up with a new plan. That was gonna take a while. Stop motion. 
First plan, upgrading a weapon increases the damage of an Ash of War. Our spear we're using for the Horfrost Stomp is at plus seven already, but there are upgrade materials to get us to plus 13 in the overworld. That would be almost twice as good. A lot of the next part is just running around Lernia talking about important things. In my Zutara fanfiction, she does eventually learn firebending and, and becomes a steam bender, but I don't think we can accept that as canon. Stones, 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 and up to the Bellum Church for the Sacred Tear. That's enough for plus nine. Before the Smithing Stone fours, we have to go to the Ruin Strewn Precipice. Everyone look, I killed a miner with the bubbles. You can't say that I didn't use the bubbles. I used them right here to kill this miner. Wow, so powerful. S-tier build. <laughs> There's some traps that apparently got blown up with the Hoarfrost Stomp, so that's a use for it, I guess. You could also just walk around them, though. I dropped off the elevator for the Smithing Stone five, but since we're bad at fighting, the Vulgar Militia were still alive. Just kind of Benny Hilled them around the hole. Up the elevator, I also killed a bat with some bubbles. Never mind triple S tier, it can kill bats. But the bats can also kill me, because someone left a message right at the bottom of the ladder. People do this so you accidentally read the message when you're trying to run away up a ladder. Those people belong in hell. Eventually we make it all the way to the top and can get the spear to plus 13. But not actually for the Knight's Cavalry. Instead, we'll be getting another ice thing that is actually right outside the entrance to Carrier Manor, not behind Carrier Manor, like I thought it was. There's a secret staircase case in the ruins that had the secret wall that we went through earlier. Lots of hidden stuff here. Very fun. The Royal Revenant is not fun. It snuck out of the Bloodborne 2 development room and started vomiting all over the place. This thing is just straight up nasty, sinking into the floor, teleporting, and moving with the frantic energy of Ludwig or Koss. Not nearly as hard as those bosses, but it just kind of moves like them. Also, I do know the healing spells hurt it. I didn't have any. This is an intelligence-based character. Her healing water is going to be the Chug Jug. Ice and water stuff is intelligence okay goodbye. Beating the Revenant gives us the Ice Needle, a rapier that's basically just a big icicle and can shoot icicles with its charged strong attack. It levels up with somber stones, we've gotten a few through the world, so let's take it to this Knight's Cavalry and see what we can do. We actually don't have enough dexterity for it until we drink the dexterity physic tier, giving us 10 extra dex for 3 minutes. That sets a timer on the fight. Not only do we have to beat the Knight's Cavalry, we have to do it in 3 minutes or less. I mistakenly tried to fight it on the ground out of habit. Since the Horfrost Stomp doesn't work on horseback, the other other attempts were grounded, and I didn't think to get on my horse right away when I had a different option. We kill the horse and get a nasty crit on him on the ground. We were about to win, but apparently when he summons the horse again, he gets invincibility frames. If anything, that seems like it should be a punish window. That stalled out the dex tier, so I ran to the grace and started over. At least it's not a death. Next attempt, a random bear decided to join us. He also just sort of stood up for a second. What are you doing, bear? You're not a people. Fighting a bear, a horse, and a Nazgul is a little bit bit much for us, so we died. No shame in that. But I was feeling disheartened. We were struggling this hard for an Ash of War I never heard of, which probably means it's garbage. I, I, I think this is still gonna be bad once we get it. At least I figured out you fight the horseman on the horse. It's the best way to do it. Our icicle just connects better and faster, so we eventually get the Knight's Cavalry dead. It's only the second boss we've killed, and I'm counting patches. This run is probably the most cursed, horrible thing ever. But this Ash of War looks kind of cool. Maybe this will be our niche, or should I say, our knack. Ice is nice. This run has been kind of a mess so far. I didn't really have a plan. I didn't even know what spirit ash I was going to use until I sort of stumbled into it. How would people feel about Angval as Ang? I mean, it's Angval. Oh, I'm getting Angval. I just said it out loud. I'm getting Angval. Before we go get a problematic age gap boyfriend, let's get a proper outfit. We have to buy it from a merchant in Raya Lucaria, so first we need a key that's behind Smarag. I'm not fighting Smarag. I'm sure the ice spear is going to be bad, and I don't want to find that out just yet. The blue dancer set is what we wore for the Sands run. Currently, the only run in our F tier. I don't think this is going to be that bad, but it's definitely not S tier. Not unless the ice spear is better than Flame of the Red Mains. Engval is in the Murkwater Catacombs, my favorite catacomb in the game. You just walk forward, pull a lever, then and walk through the boss door. All catacombs should be so simple. The boss is also amazing at the end. The Grave Warden Duelist just throws his cape off and says, come at me. Let's see how this Ice Spear does. And uh, oh, oh, the range is good. The damage is good. It applies frostbite. It comes out pretty fast. This is probably just an easy boss. It's not going to be this good later. We don't have enough mind at the moment to summon Angval, so let's just go fight Margit instead. That should be enough levels. I brought in Rajir, which does give Margit a touch more HP, but it's not a big deal. When we 
apply Frostbite, that means he's gonna take more damage, so it kind of balances out. This also goes pretty well, but Margit is oft considered Elden Ring's first boss, and we are over two hours into the run, so the fight individually is great, but it really should be considering how long it took to get us here. It at least gives us enough mind to summon that windy lad. Now that we have a partner, let's go on a double date with the Clean Rot Knights. These are Kaled level bosses in the abandoned cave where we get rotted, so I just quit out and started over. We lost some runes, but it doesn't count as a death, so there's that. The Clean Rot Knights can be a huge pain, so it's not surprising that for this garbage run, they- oh wait, how did that one stance break. Does the Ice Spear deal good stance damage with a good range, fast cast, and a status effect? Okay, we got the Golden Scarab. I always like to get it before fighting Magma Worm Makar since the rune boost it gives stacks with pickles and makes him drop around 40k runes. That's a big difference. I got some bad luck with the charge the first time. It knocked me into the lava, then the lava knocked me into more lava, and I died. But the second try, I was able to aim the Ice Spear at its face, which confirmed my theory that the stance damage on these babies was no joke. It's not flame of the red mains levels, but considering the extended range and the status effect, even a decent amount of stance damage is great. This is much more than decent. I think we're ready for some shard bearers at this point, at least almost ready. Just a few errands. First, let's roast Gilka, or more accurately, put her on ice. The ritual sword talisman will boost the ice spears, already impressive damage by 10% when we're at full HP, which should be easier to stay at, since we can stay out of the main fray while Aang tanks. Lornia takes forever to run across, but there's an Erd Tree avatar at the end that's very easy to kill for the magic shrouding cracked tier and 20% extra magic damage. Sorry Erdtree, there's only room in this world for one avatar, and he's our boyfriend. Now we'll finally go into Caria Manor and fight Loretta. Remember, she resists magic damage and is immune to frostbite. It's still easy. The ice spear base damage is just that good. I forgot to talk to Yue though. Whoopsie. Horfrost Stomp still has some uses, mostly killing birds for pickles. I guess good for that. The bubbles are also bad at that, so it's just another thing they're terrible at. Still, I will kill the Elden Beast with bubbles. That is a promise. I have Gostok open up the gate of Stormdale Castle because there's a different pretender to the Avatar throne, Godric the Grafted. He cut off a bunch of different bender arms and glued them to himself for air bending, fire bending, and earth bending. He doesn't have water bending, or if he does, he doesn't use it because bubbles are terrible. But Ice Spear is pretty great. We killed Godric in less than a minute. The other shard bearer I love to battle is Radon because it means we get to go to Jaren's party. So many great pals here. The Boulder, Piondo, and Cat Dog. I'm calling Blyde Cat Dog since you don't know his ass isn't a cat. Finding the spacing for the Ice Spear is the biggest challenge with using it. That's not all that challenging, though Radon's swords are so big they almost match our range. Applying Frostbite is great since it does a chunk of his HP right away, but more importantly, all the allies we summoned do a bit more damage as we gang up on him. By the time he jumps up, he's at about 12% HP, so he dies pretty much right after he lands. We have to continue talking to the boulder since he'll make our ice even stronger later, but right now I want to focus on making our relationship stronger. Let's level up Aang, gang. Back on the train. Time for the UA quest. Since Radon died and Sozin's Comet crashed into Limgrave, we can now head into Nakron. I grab some glove warts and fight the Mimic tier, kind of letting Aang do it while we re-equip everything before spamming some spears. Outside, I grab the somber stone from the dung beetle, then fall down some ruins to get a bigger, better bubble. I didn't know exactly where it was, but I figured it out with the help of Elden Ring's official strategy guide, looking it up on YouTube. There's a bunch of clay men guarding it with a spear that would be a little bit better than the spear we're using for making ice spears, so I killed them all with the Horfrost Stomp, but we didn't get the drop. At least we get the Great Oracular Bubble, which is really great compared to the Oracle Bubbles, at least. It's still slow to cast, it still moves really slow, but it's bigger and deals a decent amount of damage, if it connects. We got to the Finger Slayer Blade Chest, but I forgot to talk to Yue, so we have to go back above ground, then come back down. Then back up for the statue to flip the study hall so we can grab the Curse Mark of Death and come back. I grabbed the Ronnie hat and considered making a painted lady costume by farming the Fire Monk robes, since Ronnie's hat would boost our cold sorceries by 10%, but we don't have any cold sorceries yet because spells are bad. There are better versions of virtually every spell in Ash of War form. Ice Spear is an infinitely better glintstone ice crag. Chilling Mist is frozen armament and freezing mist put together. The only ice spell that's worth using is Adula's Moonblade. We're on our way to get it. Einzel Rivermane, more Glovewort, High Phalanx, Demon's Holes, Kill a Ball, Somber Stone, Golden Seed, Glovewort, and Glovewort. We'll actually be going a bit further in the UA quest this time. She 
is a pal after all. Fighting Dog from Cat Dog is pretty easy since he has Boss Posture, or Bosture for short. Most invaders are NPCs, which means they have their stance broken like you do by being parried or having their endurance run out. Boss stance is broken by consecutive attacks, so he doesn't really get to play the game when we are using the Ice Spear. Sorry we're spamming it so much, but also no I'm not. These runs are about finding the fun stuff, and Ice Spear is pretty god dang fun. Now we can level up Ang a bit. Not all the way, unfortunately, so I had to Celia, the town of Horsery, to kill a boss and get an item I want. After doing some horse parkour, we enter the arena of the Nox Duo, which is just some overworld enemies we ignored in Noxtella that they tried to pretend are a real boss. It's easy and gives us the loose stat staff, which is the best intelligence scaling staff in the game, at the penalty of double the magic cost. Alright, let's go for another easy boss, blocking another useful item, the Red Wolf of Radagon. It's just a little trip up Raya Lucario with the Swag Jump Jr. onto an elevator without seeing if it's ready for us. The Red Wolf has tremendously low amounts of HP, so it's not going to take very long. Upstairs, I grab the Radigan icon, which boosts the casting speed of spells, though it's still not enough to make the bubbles usable. Okay, up the stairs, grab the Stone Sword Key and the Golden Seed, bully Moongrum, and get ready to fight the Bloodbending Witch. She's bloodbending kids and making them throw books at us, but we can break the spell with bubbles. It's a boss, and I'm using the bubbles, everyone. Everyone can see that, right? Phase two, we just spam the spears and got that sweet W for some more runes. But I want a lot more runes. Or should I say, a rot more? Probably not. The putrid avatar has a lot of rot, that's why I thought that. It's another false avatar claimer, but this one locks me in place with one of its roots so I can't move and I die. The second time, the ice spear does its thing, keeping us safely away, applying frostbite, and stopping it from acting with a stance break. That's like 150,000 runes, so it's not just enough for Aang, we also get a few levels out of it ourselves. I would like to use this staff though, so let's go get a spell that isn't useless. For that, we have to continue the UA quest, cross the lake of rot, lots of slime in this section, makes sense, this is a Nickelodeon show. We even get to ride down a slime waterfall on the way to Estelle, another Bloodborne 2 boss that FromSoft accidentally dropped in my Elden Ring. In my first attempt, I had some trouble finding the spacing. It's even harder when you're fighting a weird space snake that won't stop teleporting. The teleport also has a hitbox, so I died. On attempt number two, I had the download, much better spacing. Less whiffs means more stance pressure for a stance break. But then we got Meteor, and gravity lifted, and finally lasered to death. Part three, we avoided the nothing personnel grab, Astell's deadliest attack. I'd show you what it looks like, but remember, I avoided it. We avoided the meteors better this time, but still rode that gravity wave. It wasn't enough to kill us though, so we squeak out the wind and can head to the moonlight altar. We do have to get an engagement ring for Yue. And Sokka. Katara and Yue would never work, no matter what 1500 people on AO3 say. On the moonlight altar, a doula waits, an ice dragon that heavily resists magic, but weirdly not frostbite? Whoops. The ice spear is also amazing at hitting dragons in their weak faces, so an early stance break makes our first attempt seem strong. Unfortunately, Adula's Moonblade one-shots us. Can you see why I want it? Attempt number two, I balance the spacing to bait out the bite and wing attack. That means less sword from her and more spear from us. Moonblade acquired. That's a charge spell, so I want the Godfrey icon, which means fighting Godfroy, who is a clone of the God Rick boss fight, not the Godfrey boss fight. Does that make sense? No, but we win easily. Y'all, this spear is amazing. We had about 10 minutes left in the first stream, so I scooped up three sacred tears in the Weeping Peninsula. We had no more errands to run for stream two. If we can do this quickly, this could be the biggest comeback story in the history of these runs. It's go time. First up is the Draconic Tree Sentinel, and the hardest part is finding the spacing, especially considering he's on a horse that loves to hop around and firebend. I guess the horse is friends with a dragon, since they are the original firebenders. It's not that bad though, Bill Angval is a fantastic tank, keeping the aggression on him and letting us make some serious DPS. We use those runes to level up the Lustat staff and get a few smithing stones from the Grail. I forgot to do that errand earlier. Into bossing, say there's another Erd Tree Cabbage, you know what the gang does to cabbages. I scooped up the Ritual Shield Talisman for better resistances when we're at full health, then it's time to fight a Ghost of Boomy, the Godfrey Shade. He's immune to all status effects because ghosts don't get cold, everyone knows that. Their stances do break though, and they take magic damage, so it's not that hard. With that, we have enough intelligence to hit the requirements for the Lustat Staff. Not the strength requirement, but that doesn't matter. Take it away, live stream Phil. It says we don't have the requirements for the staff right see the little x on there that only affects the bonk with the staff so that only affects doing this that does not affect the spells 
I tested the Moonblade on a Black Knife Assassin, and it uses a lot of magic, but it does a lot of damage. On to Morgoth, a Swamp Bender. I summon the Avatar and Aang Vol. I don't know how they're both here at the same time, since they're supposed to be reincarnations of each other. Whatever. Since I have two assistants to distract Morgi, I thought it would be a good boss to bubble. I was right, kind of. There isn't a good boss to bubble, because bubble is bad, so we died. But the second try, I was able to bubble him into phase two. Then I realized our damage was too low for us to have enough magic in phase two, so I switched to the ice spear and ran out of magic. Aang and the other avatar get it done, I just kind of waited. Good job, team. Up to the Northern Water Tribe now, through the Forbidden Lands, and up the Grand Lift of Rold for the Mountaintops of the Giants. This is where we could grab Zuko. His heat would actually pair fantastically with our Ice Spear, since it would reset the Frostbite and let us proc it again faster. But going to get him would take too long, and we're on pace for a high-tier build, so let's just boogie. Bell Bearing 3, Ignorialis Borealis, grab the Smithing Stone 10, rest at the Grace to avoid the Murder Crow, then level up the Spear to plus 18. Big Ozai time. The Ice Spear breaks his stance super fast and afflicts him with the Frostbite. Even though he's made of fire and lives on top of an ice mountain. So he's very resistant to Frostbite, but if he's not fully immune, yeah, he doesn't resist it. Katara also doesn't resist giant meteors, so I took an L there. That only puts us at 11 total deaths, tied with Leonardo for the least amount of deaths in a run so far. The second try, I found better spacing in Phase 2. I stayed far enough away to be safe, but close enough that my spears still hit. After breaking its stance, I bust out a Dula's Moonblade on the giant's Netherlands, then decide that the Ice Spear is just better in terms of cost per magicking. I know I'm using the double magic cost staff, but it's supposed to compensate with higher damage. It doesn't compensate enough. Spells are bad. I stand by that. Just get an Ash of War and kill the Fire Giant with that. Into crumbling for Ramazula, I stopped at the comment section Grace, then summon Big Bernie to get ready to fight the Godskins with three-part harmony. I start off with the skinny one, since he has less HP, and Bernie was taking on the fat cat. Typical Bernie. Once the Fire Noodle is neutralized, I put some cold on Chunky and break his stance as he's about to charge up the rollout. It's my least favorite move, it made me very happy to stop it. Skinny comes back, I take him out, then Chunky comes back and tries to roll out again, and no, no rollout. Ang and Bernie take him out, then we get another skinny one to end the fight. First try victory. The bell bearing they drop lets us max out the spear, and most importantly, max out the ice spear, Ash of War, but technically not quite. We have to land the swag jump, go through a fog door, and up the elevator to fight the boulder, except I did forget to talk to him in the hot tub of Mount Gelmnir. We almost missed out on the Hot Springs episode. I'm so sorry. I wiped the magma worm out on the way there, then talked to the boulder, and met up with him in Faramazula to fight to the death. We won, obviously, and got the Shard of Alexander for 15% more damage from Ashes of War. Nothing can kill us now, except uh, clumsy platforming. Whoops. No longer tied for the least amount of deaths. We don't die on the bird run, though, getting a Somberstone 10 on the way for our trouble, and finding ourselves face to face with the Draconic 3 Sentinel. With a powered up ice spear, he's no problem. Maliketh is next, he can be a huge pain in the Tukus, but the spear is dealing massive damage, applying frostbite, and keeping us at a distance. Phase 2 gets weird, I tried to bait the front flip, but he just kept back flipping. Did it twice. It threw off my groove a little bit, but never got me killed, and we have another boss dead thanks to the spear. I know you're sick of this spear though, I hear it. Phil, is this an ice spear only run? That's not a Katara run, where's the Wawa? First, ice is water. Second, here it is, against Gideon Offmere. I send a bubble in slowly, then Moonblade for as much damage as possible, since the bubble moves slowly enough that I can get those hits off. I should have just speared, but oh well. After the initial blast, it's nothing but bubbles and keeping distance. Gideon kills Aang, but I'm not giving up on my quest to kill a boss with the bubbles. I bait him under the balcony, letting me use the columns as cover to block his Comet Azur, while my bubbles slowly drift in to bobble him. Victory achieved bubbles only percent. Big Boomy has some new moves and does way more damage than he did before. So, here's an idea. Don't get hit. Start off phase one with the spears. I don't know if Frostbite ever even procced. Apparently the Badlands are very cold. Minnesota DLC, please Miyazaki. Phase two starts and he busts out the earthquake. I realized it was the perfect time for another bubble. Then closed out with some more ice spears, but more importantly, not a single hit of damage taken. We're 
on the path to S tier, baby. After activating Godric's Great Rune, I head right in and get ready for the Vatui Laturi. It gave Toph the absolute business, so will Katara share a similar fate? And more importantly, will we be able to kill the Elven Beast with a bubble? Let's find out. Phase 1, Radagon. He's fast and great at closing distance, so it's tricky to find the right spacing. He's actually vulnerable to Frostbite, though. Everything but bleed, technically. So we get a stance break, get the Frostbite, and overall it ends up being pretty clean. Vatu is the real threat, though, with swarms of ridiculous moves that are ridiculous to avoid. We hot swap some talismans and start the spear train, breaking the stance and sending in some bubbles. I'll use them whenever I can, and the damage is comparable to the ice spear as long as I'm close. Elden Stars begins, and I hoof it in the opposite direction. It's the best way to mitigate some of the damage. Basically, I just need it to not use a few other moves, or at least target Aang. Vatu chooses the latter. It rains down on Rang. Three rings come out, and I hop over them, preparing to hit Vatu when he comes out, then get the stance break. It has just enough health for one bubble. Mission accomplished at 6 hours, 13 minutes in-game time, 29 bosses slain, and 12 deaths, which would have been 11, tied for the least deaths, if I didn't whip a jump in for Ramazula. I am shocked by how good this run was, considering how rough it started. It can claim the top spot for the longest amount of time it took on average for us to die, and ends up somewhere next to Ganondorf. Ice Spear is my new favorite Ash of War. I think it might even be better than Flame of the Red Mains. It just does everything, and I worry this video will spotlight it and get it nerfed. The bubbles are a Facebook meme. They're a joke, and they haven't been funny for months. Find a better way to get an Ice Spear that isn't water-themed, and you're gonna have a great time. If you want to have an even better time, though, follow me on Twitch watch me do these runs live. I'm finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. You can join my Patreon to give me money if you want to, and follow my other channel if you like Dungeons & Dragons. I build characters in that game too.